Welcome back once again, Real People, Real Life, Wichita, Kansas, Bravo. America! <laughs> and still, <laughs> I don't know, I, one of these days, balloons and confetti are just going to start Have it from drop the sky. on us. I know, wouldn't that be fun? Um, so again, we still have Sandy Swank, right? Is that right? Okay. That's correct. From Interfaith Ministries here in Wichita, Kansas, America. And I think homeless is not just an issue that we face here, you know, in Wichita, obviously, it's, it's everywhere. Um, you know, and not just the United States either. There was a group that we worked with in uh, Mexico that was called the Children of the Doll. Mm -hmm. And that was a fabulous organization to work with down there. Uh, and those children literally were eating out of the dump. Mm -hmm. And we got them through eighth grade. That wow. was a miracle. So yeah, really miracles good. happen. Believe yes, me, I do. see them and I believe in them. Okay, so we kind of talked about the one shelter that takes in the parents and families. children and families mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You have another shelter that um, can actually help people that do have limited medical, uh, mental health issues. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, what, tell me about that. Uh, that's Tiwachone Safe Haven. Okay. That's uh, on North Broadway. And it's for severely and persistently mentally ill, chronically homeless. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that'll, that'll put you under just trying to say it. Yeah, no kidding. How full is that one? Um, it's never completely full. Okay. What? Because, because... Uh, it's it's a long-term shelter, and, and when you remember, long -term, well, long-term long -term is it can be up to two years. Wow. They can stay there up to two years. Wow. Keep in mind that we're not talking about just ordinary mentally ill people. We're talking about chronically SPMIs that are really, really, really ill. Wow. And so most of them have um, psychosis, uh -huh. schizophrenia, those kind of things. Whoa, okay. So it's very hard for them to come in. They don't like to come in. Right. Because uh, one of the problems that folks have is that they don't want their rights taken away from them. Uh -huh. And so right. often when they deal with mental health services, they get their rights taken away from mm -hmm. them. So they're really pretty afraid to come in. And then a lot of times they become so ill, they don't even recognize they need it. I feel like that, the stipulations like those, are what keep a lot of these people scared to come and seek out help. I mean, I think that there's... A, like you said yourself, um, it, it's a database. You don't necessarily, you have identifying markers, right? Right. So I, but you don't necessarily, it's not set up to like find out who's in trouble and turn them in. This is actually something set up to help. And the prereqs to get in, let's say you're a family, what are the prereqs to get in for your family to get off of the street? Well, if the family comes down to the end, um, they're asked to fill out paperwork which pretty much asks what's been going on and how they ended up there. It will ask for the uh, usually the last parts of the social security number and where they lived previously, any other places that they lived. There will be some questions about uh, criminal background and those kind of things, any drug use, uh, maybe mental health services, that kind of thing, where they've been working, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the questions that's on there as well at the end is, uh, do you have any relatives here? You know, oh. or who to contact, right. that kind of thing. So you, you have to look at all these things when they come in, and then generally the set person will go over this sheet and ask them questions. I tend to find out more during that interview when I talk to them than any other interview I do because they're more open. They're certainly trying to get in, so right. they're going to probably give you more information. So um, really, they don't even have to have identification. Really? No. I was going to ask you that because a lot of people don't. Yeah. No, no, I, I had someone tell me just recently, uh, you'll have all these people coming down there to get in that are homeless. And I was like, no, I hardly think that's going to happen. I don't think that, that's Most the people don't just come down to try to get into a homeless shelter. Okay. And if right. they do, there's something wrong. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 they, yeah, they need so, a much better travel agent or something. So I'm not, well, I'm not at all worried about that. Right. And, and most of the time, I, I think probably the major concern for people today is whether or not they're documented. Right, correct. And I, it, it's not that I don't care about it, it's just that when people are homeless, that's what we deal with. Mm -hmm. I'm not dealing with all of the other social construct at that moment. Right. Now that may be part of it. It might be part, yeah. But certainly not at that point. Yeah. And especially if there's no criminal background or anything. Oh, well, yeah. Right. So when you ask them about that criminal background, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you're sitting somewhere or somebody's sitting somewhere behind a computer going, aha, there they are. And trying to get anything that's not well, the point is no it? no i'm not going to get anything on them but right. if if i have let's say for instance that i have a male that comes in mm -hmm. 
I, at the family shelter, I am going to look at that background. Right. Well, right. I think that's good, especially yeah. when the children, there's children around. Right. Now, this one again is just our overflow. How many can how many can stay here? I give up. Really? <laughs> as many as we got room for, I huh? mean, yeah, yeah. Generally, I mean, we just keep putting people in. Like uh, <laughs> over the last couple of nights, we've been at uh, total number with the women and the men combined at 99 and 100. So. Wow. Uh, you know, over here, there's probably 89, somewhere thereabouts, 85 to 89. And uh, the women have ranged anywhere from like five or six in the evening to 24, so it just depends. Um, okay, if, what about uh, people that want to donate, you know, to Interfaith Ministries? Do you take blankets? Do you take furniture? I mean, what if, <coughs> it's not everybody always wants to donate money, but of course money would be, would be great. Money's the best thing, right? really. Right. Yeah. Uh, because one of the things I'll tell you about this particular shelter is that uh, th there is very little funding for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Interfaith is doing it in all likelihood, and I, I know this for a fact, because it's the right thing to do. Right. Uh, we definitely don't want to see people out in, in the weather when it becomes no. life-threatening. No. Because, you know, one of the, my major concern, I, I know that people sometimes talk about, well, people die out there or not. My major concern is the slow death that people are presented with when, when it's cold because uh, a lot of them are uh, frostbitten. They get frostbite. Right. And, and that can take a year or two to actually claim its victim, you Correct. know, because Correct. it's just a little bit of the body parts at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, several double amputees right now in nursing <coughs> homes from that. So From frostbite? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. If you know, I want to ask you real quick. I notice a lot of the homeless people are accompanied by pet. What happens when they show up here with a pet? Well, um, I don't know. I, Dr. Scare, I work with Kristen Scare, and uh, they have a little fund that's put back now to try to help some of these folks get the shots and things that they need for their dogs, mm -hmm. cats, whatever. That's the first thing that we ask is, do you right. have the paperwork on them? Uh, they cannot come in if they don't have the well, paperwork. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, I do have two little dogs and I think a cat living at the safe haven. And, mm -hmm. and I have had other little pets down at the end. Yeah. Uh, we've had things that ranged all the way from tarantulas to iguanas. Wow. And, you know, <laughs> wow. Uh, parrots, you name it. I, I even had a, a pet crawdad one time named Beasley. Really? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> That's yeah. cute. Yeah. He okay. big. He looked like a lobster. That's hilarious. I uh, kind of have a turtle there somewhere. So, so they can bring their pets if they have it documented? They for have to have it documented. Records. And of course, if they have a service dog, actually the same thing applies. They still have to have the records. Right. You know, but they can we, accompany their owner in here? Yes. Wow, that's pretty they cool. Could. A lot of people didn't know that. Although what I would tell you is, is that if somebody comes in, because service dogs are not supposed to be petted and supposed Correct. to be attention mm -hmm. to, okay. uh, what I have done in the past to send them to the Haven. Uh, yeah. where they're away from folks, not so right. many folks around. Because yeah. here, you bring in a pet, everybody wants to pet it. They right. all want to right. it, you know, so. Gosh, I mean, I'm just sitting here looking at, of course, there's nobody here right now. You know, it's, but it's all these, right now, but look at, look at all these cots and blankets and, and so and you guys full. are just ready to go, you know. Um, I guess one of the next things, you know, in addition to trying to have some of these facilities uh, be a little bit more specialized to the needs of the people that are out there, what are you seeing when it comes to our veterans? Um, there has been an extraordinary effort, I think, on the part of this community to try to work with veterans. There are several programs out there, as I understand it, that are specifically designed for their housing needs and things right now. Um, we've worked very closely with the VA and some of the other programs that help put together some of the vouchering. So I, I think over the last two years, the, the 2016 end date you know, has really been taken seriously. Uh, do I think it's going to end? No, I don't. Right. I mean, I think that as long as there's a vet out there, there's going to be, you yeah. know, it, it's going to happen. But um, I do think that there has been a concerted effort. There are some different issues with veterans than we have with some of the other folks in that uh, PTSD right. seems right. to be one of the major issues. Mm -hmm. And although I think that mental health services has made an attempt to deal with that, I think it's very different and it takes an altogether different approach uh -huh. in working with some of these guys. You're right, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, uh, one of the best uh, clinicians that I know is actually a recovering PTSD person out of uh, Oklahoma 
and he's just a really tough guy, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have the PhD and everything behind right. him. So yeah, they only yeah. call on him limited, but uh, they, they are even trying some new and different ideas about yeah. how to work with people. So. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that we've enjoyed, you know, working on over the years has been working with Midwest Battle Buddies and, you know, yes. different organizations that are doing so many amazing things, you know, for our veterans and stuff like that. Um, Sandy, I know that, you know, I we only wanted to get maybe two 12-minute segments, but um, hey, I would like to have you back again, if that's okay. And uh, let's kind of go for another segment and see about tying up some things. How can people get back into donating? And what are some of the things that we need to be kind okay. of walk, watching for as we get in, you know, back in our nasty little cold weather? Because we're not done with winter yet. No, and, and maybe what the average person out there that can't actually donate money, but maybe can help with food or furniture or, or they clothing, where they can time do or something. We got a lot to do, we're that. not done. We're not done. We'll be right back. Real people, real life, Wichita, Kansas, America. America. Wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the balloons. Confetti falls. Yeah. <laughs>